Ukrainian President much. Volodymyr Zelensky has just wrapped up visit to the Pentagon meeting with Secretary of Defense and other top military leaders. Zelensky's trip to Washington will be a quick one. He met with congressional leaders this morning and in just a few hours will make his second trip to the White House for discussions with President Biden. News Nation's Joe Khalil is live on Capitol Hill and Joe Zelensky's return to D.C., his first since December, comes at another pivotal time in the war with Russia. Yeah, it does, Nick. And look, it's really almost impossible to understate how important this trip is for Vladimir Zelensky. You talked about this is a pivotal point in the war. There is a counteroffensive Ukraine uh, is launching right now that is going much slower than anticipated. They need weapons. They need funding. And he is here again uh, in the American Congress pleading for more help, for more aid, more weapons and the rest. Now, last time Zelensky made this trip here to the Capitol, he was welcomed as a hero. Not that he isn't this time, but the audience is certainly a little different this time around. A lot more hesitation and skepticism from some in Congress to continue to provide billions of dollars for Ukraine, particularly those in the House Republican Conference. Now, you see uh, President Zelensky there on your screen. He was meeting with members of the House, uh, a bipartisan group. It was a smaller group. He's walking there with the Democratic leader, Hakeem Jeffries. Later in the afternoon, he met with the full United States Senate, and he addressed all of them there. A lot more support in the Senate for Zelensky and for Ukraine than there is uh, among House Republicans. And let's put up on your screen, just so uh, you, everyone can be reminded what the ask is at this point. You've got $13 billion in security, $8.5 billion in economic aids. That's a total of about $24 billion, most of that going directly to the war effort uh, in Ukraine. But what I can tell you is what I've been hearing from Republican members of Congress who we've spoken with is they want to see detailed plans from the White House about how some of this money is going to be spent, more of a strategy from the White House. And they also want to see President Biden push our European allies to contribute more of their funds to this war effort as well. Uh, we talked to a number of Republicans today, one of them being uh, Buddy Carter, Republican from Georgia. Here's what he told us about this. We feel like the, the, the Biden administration is, is making a half effort at this in the way of sending uh, equipment and weapons over there. We need them more lethal weapons so that we can we can end this war. And we, you know, I'm always fine as long as I can see the light at the end of the tunnel. But I'm just not seeing a plan. So I want to be clear, Nick, most of Congress supports more aid to Ukraine, and certainly many Republicans do. But that hesitation you just heard. I'm hearing that a lot. And another thing that they've added is that the timing here really couldn't be worse. In the House, uh, uh, specifically, there is a big debate about potentially shutting the government down over spending levels and whether we are running too much of a deficit. So you add that to the conversation about should we spending billions more uh, to Ukraine, that's certainly going to complicate things here. And Joe, Representative Carter is not alone in his criticism. We've heard others say that the Biden administration has been slow to give Ukraine what they need. But Joe, what are Democrats saying in response to Republicans opposed to more funding for Ukraine? Yeah, so about half Republicans, maybe more, and Democrats are on the same page here uh, when they say that, look, this is absolutely essential funding for Ukraine. They say this isn't something that we should be considering as an isolationist nation, something that's happening overseas that we shouldn't worry about. They're talking about this being an existential threat to democracies, not just uh, in Ukraine, but beyond that in Europe from some of our European allies. And they say that strategically, we benefit if one of our strongest adversaries in Russia is being fought and, and actually losing to Ukraine when the United States is not putting any boots on the ground at all. It's simply we're providing Ukraine with the money, the funding and the weapons to do the fighting, and they are doing it. So Democrats have been arguing that this is strategically in our benefit and that uh, maybe the White House does need to be making that argument in a more forceful way to the public. Strategically in our benefit. Joe Khalil live for us this afternoon. Joe Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.